And are we recording? I'm sorry, my email's now in the way. Well, okay. yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, so good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Westminster Internship uh, 101. Um, so uh, you all know me, but uh, Justice here at the Chamber. Um, and we're with Mandy Plybon, and she's going to talk to us about the program a little bit, um, just to give you a little uh, introduction. Um, Mandy works with industry partners who want to connect with Westminster students and faculty. This includes job and internship opportunity announcements, recruitment for jobs and internships, advertising industry programs such as webinars, job fairs, uh, and more. Um, so she also manages the Westminster internship program. In this role, she provides guidance and support through every step of the in internship process. Uh, for students, Mandy assists in the registration process and provides career-related guidance. For industry partners, such as yourself, uh, and course instructors, she assists with any questions or concerns regarding the academic or site work components. So that was a little introduction. Mandy, thank you for sending that to me because I would not remember. <laughs> um, but welcome, and we look forward to hearing all about the program. Thank you, Justice. I'm excited to be here. Uh, so I actually ran through this presentation. I was just telling Justice, I tend to wing everything, uh, but I decided to actually practice this time and give myself some notes. So the, it runs about 30 minutes or so. Um, I'd like to get through it no more than 30 minutes. So we have the rest of the time for questions. Um, if you have questions, just put them in the chat box and then um, we can look at them at the end as we go, or you can just save them. And I figure we can all unmute ourselves and just have a conversation that way as well, whatever you wanna do. Um, I'm just gonna go through some slides here to share internship, inform general internship information with you. Uh, and then a couple slides specific to Westminster College. Um, so as Justice said, I'm the employer connections coordinator um, and really, I do two things. I, I do a lot of things, but really two big things. I manage the internship program on campus. It's a centralized program where if a student wants to receive credit for an internship, um, they have to work with me. Um, I'm basically the registrar office for internships. And then I also, my other big component is as the employer connections person. So I work with industry partners. Um, so the, the internship lingo there and in industry partners to um, connect you all with our students uh, as well as faculty. I think faculty get forgotten. Um, we're more than happy to make connections with specific um, departments for you if you're interested in talking to um, students within the classroom. And I'll talk about uh, that and some other ways where you can get involved on campus um, towards the end of the slides here. Uh, but where I'm housed is in the Office of Advising and Career Development. Um, we used to be the Center for Career Development and then we had some transitioning done. Uh, we have two full-time professional advisors for our new freshman students and new transfer students. And so now we are within one office and we are actually located in a new student success center. Um, so we have our office we have a student success coach who helps um, students who are struggling academically or, or otherwise. Uh, and then we also have our global educational services office. Uh, and that person works with our international student group uh, as well as students interested in studying abroad. So we're all bundled up under the student success center umbrella. Um, so career services specifically is a two person team here at Westminster. Uh, my colleague is the career counselor, while I, again, coordinate the internship program and then really focus on employer outreach. While we help employers reach students for all kinds of reasons, um, Justice mentioned them in the introduction, you see them here on the slide. Um, today, my focus is specific to internships. So Westminster believes internships are not made equally um, to provide an academic standard and a quality educational experience. Um, we believe internships should meet these stated elements here. Um, this definition is from the National Association of Colleges and Employers. 
Um, they are kind of our guiding light or the, they're the guiding light of career service offices across colleges and universities. Um, if we want to find best practices or standards of service, that this is where we go to. Um, so this is their definition of an internship. And basically what we consider to be an educational internship worth receiving credit for. Um, it needs to be an opportunity to apply classroom learning to a real world environment, um, an opportunity where students can learn skills and knowledge that are transferable to other employment settings. Um, so a lot of the soft skills like um, time management, communication, leadership, technology skills, all those soft skills. Um, the internship should also make a meaningful contribution to an organization um, where it shouldn't just be 100% filing. I know when I was in high school, I um, volunteered, now this is different, but I volunteered at the, at the hospital here in Fulton and all I did was file, which is great for a volunteer, but an intern um, should be doing other things. Um, a filing can be part of it, but it shouldn't be their entire focus. Um, they need to be making that contribution. Um, the internship should also provide the student opportunity to learn and investigate about career pathways. So again, this is an experience for them to see whether or not they wanna go down this career path after graduation. Um, and also, finally, it's a way for them to, uh, the internship should be an opportunity for them to gain entry level experience. Again, kind of thinking about it as a step one towards a job in the field. Um, an educational internship is not a part time job. It's not a volunteer experience. It's not a chance to, you know, get coffee for the office all the time or file all the time. Um, and it's not, should not be 100% grunt work where maybe you are moving offices and you hire an intern and all they're doing is the labor part of it. <laughs> they're not really learning anything um, except how to maybe get a bad back. <laughs> um, but the bottom line here is that an internship really should be educational. And there should be elements of ongoing mentorship um, professional development or training opportunities throughout the internship experience, not just within that initial kind of training period that you would do with any new person. So from an employer standpoint, um, having an intern can be a really positive experience. Um, there are a number of benefits um, to having an intern or developing a formal internship program. Um, but I've listed four here that I just want to go through. I feel like these are some of the top benefits that you could get out uh, from having an intern. Um, so molding future employees, so offering internships on a regular basis is a great recruiting tool. Um, it's an effective way to evaluate a student's potential as a full-time employee. I mean, how many times, hopefully not often, but how many times do you hire somebody based on maybe one or two interviews. You don't really know that person after one or two interviews, but if you have an intern, you're evaluating them that entire um, semester. You know, three, you have a three to four months long interview period for this student or this potential new hire. Um, having year round opportunities, especially, so fall, spring, summer, winter break opportunities um, creates an ongoing pipeline. So you're constantly having um, that those student interns as a potential new hire for you. Um, at the one year mark, interns who become full-time employees are almost 30% more likely to still be at your company than other full-time hires. Um, evaluating company training methods. I'm not sure how many employers really consider this as a benefit or as something you can do. Um, so let's say you have a training method or you have your modules or your system, your checklist, um, but you're not really sure how it's going. Like you don't really get feedback from your new hires is just what you've been doing. Um, if you train your interns using the same training method, 
as your new hires, um, you can evaluate how that's going. Like you can ask the intern for feedback afterwards to see how it went. Or if you're considering um, switching things up and creating different training modules or a different training checklist, you can test that out with your interns. Um, they can be your guinea pigs, um, so to speak, where you can kind of evaluate and test the waters for your new, your new methods. And if you have no training, no kind of training at all for new hires, this is having an intern is a great way to develop that initial training system. Um, assessing classroom learning versus online on the job application is another one where I'm not sure if it's something like that comes to the top of your, your mind as an employer, but um, having interns is a great way to compare what current college students are learning in the classroom versus the practical application, like what's actually happening day to day in the real world. Uh, sometimes it's not the same thing, <laughs> and it's kind of eye-opening for the student um, where they're learning all of these theories and methods and everything. They're, they do practice, um, you know, simulations in the classroom, but then when you go, when they go on the job in an internship and actually experience what really goes on, sometimes it's a little jarring, like, oh, this went so much smoother in the classroom when I actually didn't have a client to talk to. Um, <laughs> wow, I have a lot to learn here. Um, but for the employer, it's a great way to see what exactly the students, current college students are learning within your field to either adjust um, your expectations maybe for, for new entry level employees, or maybe it's an opportunity to share with the um, college student intern, hey, I know you're, I, I realize that you're, this is what you're learning in classroom, but I want to show you like this is what we're currently using here like this system is what we're currently using um, so it's a great learning experience both ways and then the fourth benefit i just want to mention briefly is um, improving company productivity so how many of us are super busy i am <laughs> how many of us have a to-do list like two pages long i do um, interns are a great way to get those projects or get those little things checked off your to-do list. Um, a NACE survey, so again, the National Association of College uh, and Employers, a NACE survey found that only 8% of intern tasks involved clerical or non-essential work responsibilities. So the other 92% were actually given, um, you know, higher level tasks, project work, which is what it should be. Um, because they're there to learn and they're there to help you, the employer. So a quality intern can provide your company a means to an end, as in a way to get that much needed project done that's been sitting on your to-do list for you know a year or two years or longer. Um, they can help full-time staff avoid becoming overburdened by all these side projects and they can free those full-time staff up to accomplish things that are more higher level or needing that higher level of expertise. Maybe a bigger research project that the full-time staff person really needs to focus on, but the intern can maybe review, um, you know, handouts for a presentation or they can work on a, pro a PowerPoint for a program or do those little things that eat up all of our days as I'm sure we are all familiar with. So I want to share with you um, three different types of kind of internship experiences. Uh, I shouldn't say internships, but these are three types of experiences that I kind of want to focus on today. Um, these are all options for you as an employer. Um, I wanted to show you really that it's not just about the semester long internship. There are other options. For, for you guys. Um, so their semester long internship, you know, this is our standard traditional method that we all are probably used to. It's three to four months, um, semester long. Then you maybe get a new intern or maybe that intern continues for the next semester. Generally it's in person. Um, most of the time the college students uh, will receive academic credit or they're able to receive academic credit. Um, the 
not the problem, but the level of commitment for the employer, for the supervisor, for semester long internships is really pretty high. And you need like long bursts of energy to get through the three to four months. You have to plan for, or you should plan for those three to four months. Like what is this person gonna be doing this entire time? Um, what kind of mentoring will we be able to do for you know, three to four months? What conferences are coming up that they can attend? attend? Um, there's all this planning involved that takes a lot of en energy. I mean, you have to plan ahead for it to be a quality experience for both parties. Uh, micro internships is different. Um, it's trending right now because of COVID, but also it's been, it's existed for a long time. It's just not the traditional model. So micro internships are project-based um, or time-based. So they can be in-person or virtual, really whatever the employer is needing or whatever the project is requires. Um, generally they are paid kind of like, um, like freelance work or like uh, flex jobs. Or there's some other websites where it's like freelancers can, can um, bid on a job and they get that job and then they get paid for just that one project and then they move on. Um, academic credit is available. I'm gonna talk about the little asterisks at the end, um, but there's a little caveat to that. Um, it is a high level of commitment for the employer, just because, again, you have to plan ahead, like, okay, what projects can a student intern help with, and what exactly are we wanting them to do? But the energy that you need are short, it's short term. So let's say a project that you have is an annual event that your organization does. So you hire an intern to... Um, help specifically with this event. Um, so they would only start whenever you're ready to start working on that event or when you're needing that person. And then the internship ends as soon as that event is done. So let's say you think um, an intern, you could give an intern um, 60 hours of work to help with this annual event. When those 60 hours are done, then everyone would move on. So if that 60 hours is in you know, three weeks time, then the internship is over. If it's, um, let's say 60 hours, but it's like a week long. So it's a really big work week for the student, but let's say it's in the summer, they do 60 hours in a week for your event and then it's done. So you have a week long intern and then it's over. So it's high commitment for you all, um, but it's shorter amount of times. And then job shadowing is the other is another option. I put a, it's kind of the outlier uh, because it's not really not a lot of students do it um, because I don't think they consider it as a as a legitimate option for them. But it's a great way for students, especially those who are just starting out, kind of figuring out what they're wanting to do and they kind of are interested in maybe three different fields or three different occupations within one industry. Um, job shadowing, the length of time, the length of commitment for the employer and the student really depends. Most of the time it's a day, eight hours or two half days or sometimes I've seen students who've shadowed for a week at one time in one office um, these job shadowing opportunities uh, really do need to be in person because uh, the whole goal, the whole idea behind it is they are shadowing you or whomever in the office. Um, they're observing, they're learning, and that's all they're doing. They don't do hands-on projects. They're not trained. They're not given assignments. All they're there to do is to observe and to see what it's like day-to-day -day in said um, industry or said profession. Um, for the uh, financial piece of job shadowing, well, because they're not doing anything, well, they it's unpaid. So there's no commitment at all for them or for you all. They don't receive academic credit because again, it's such a short amount of time. It's really kind of a chance for them to learn. They're not doing um, 
anything to develop their skills. And the level of commitment for the employer is low. And again, they're short bursts of energy because there's such a short amount of time. It's low commitment because all you have to do is figure out who's this person gonna shadow. Um, and then the person should be able to um, answer questions that the student asks, or you know, you wanna engage them in conversation, of course, um, but there's no training involved. And again, there's no projects that you have to make sure the student is doing. Um, it's just a short, short um, time span. So the asterisks I, I have included here are, are little things that um, are a little different. So for semester long internships, you know, traditionally they are in person, uh, but because of COVID and the pandemic for the last year, that's really been flipped on its head. More and more um, employers are offering virtual internships instead of in-person, or some are offering hybrid models where it's mainly virtual and then some in-person or vice versa. So that is something to consider if you feel that, that a virtual internship is an option for your organization. Um, I would definitely consider that. It is a viable opportunity uh, and they can earn credit even for a virtual um, experience. Um, the downside of virtual internships is really for our new students who've never had an internship before or they've never worked anywhere before. Um, so if you are thinking about a virtual internship, I would think um, even more about what the mentoring looks like virtually. Um, what kind of support or extra support would you provide to the student who is working on their own in their room instead of in an office with all of the you know, physical support, the in-person support that you get working in, in an actual building with other people around. <laughs> um, the financial piece, uh, so this is, this is tricky. Um, everybody's different, every organization is different, the budgets are different, everything like that. Um, for Westminster, students can receive credit for internships that are paid or not paid. It's really up to the student on whether or not they want to do an unpaid or paid internship. We have no requirement. Um, I suggest, I highly suggest to employers that they do pay the student in some way, either um, an hourly wage or a stipend uh, because I've noticed in just the three years that I have been in this office, uh, the majority of the students are need to be paid. It's not like, well, yeah, I'd love to be paid. Like who wouldn't? It's I need to get paid. Um, I can't do an internship unless I'm paid. Um, we found across the board a high number of students who are actually being relied upon back at home to pay bills at home. So not only are they focused on their schoolwork and paying their college bill, they're also occupied by paying electric bills at home or car payments at home for their mom or dad. Or There's a growing number of students, um, which is terrible, but the growing number of students who are being relied upon to pay those family bills. I say that, but that's not your responsibility as an employer to make sure that they're okay at home. I'm just wanting to share that with you all. So when you're thinking about, oh, do we pay or not pay them? Um, there are a lot of extenuating circumstances in the students, from the student's perspective, where sometimes they're not going to look at any unpaid, they're only focused on the paid internships. Um, where I think a stipend is a good compromise between the two, you know, not everybody can pay an hourly wage for an intern or two interns or however many you're thinking about. Uh, but maybe you can do a you know, $300 stipend or $500 stipend. Um, you know, that might be less of a commitment for your organization or easier to um, get approved from the higher ups who are in charge of the budget. Um, and then the academic credit will asterisk for micro internships so um, students, in order to receive credit for an internship, they have to log a certain number of hours at work. 
Um, and so each credit that they want to receive, they have to work 35 hours. So let's say a project, like you are thinking about a micro internship and your project, you think in 20 hours and that's it. Well, it's not enough for them to receive credit. It's still a viable opportunity for them because they can gain those professional skills, uh, but they just won't be able to receive credit for that. Okay. For um, organizations that have never had an intern before, or maybe you've had one here and there, but you're just not really, just don't really know what happens. Um, I recommend starting with job shadowing and micro internships, you know, start small and kind of test the waters if you're really apprehensive about it. And then once you feel comfortable with, okay, this is the process, this is what we're wanting to do. We have this training set up. Um, I know exactly what's going to happen here. Then I would move to the semester long internships because that is again, the highest level of commitment for an employer. But again, if you're starting out and you're not really sure if an internship is really what you need, I would start smaller with the job shadowing and the micro internships. Okay, so what is my role in all of this stuff here? Um, so I can help you do all of these things. So I'm, again, not only here for the students with their internships, I'm not only here for the faculty members who are working with our students, but I'm here for the employers too. So if you wanna brainstorm ideas, let's say you're not even sure if an intern is a right option for you or a good option for you. We can brainstorm your needs. We can think about together, you know, how can a student meet those needs? Um, we can talk about turning a part-time job into an internship because it, we are open to doing that. It just requires the soup on the supervisor side to add in those mentoring and those professional development opportunities where the student isn't just clocking in and clocking out and they're done for the day. Um, again, we can I can help you design um, internship programs. So if you're wanting to really create this robust internship program in your organization, um, I can help you do that. I've got uh, quite a few materials that I can send. Uh, and I'm going to attach some things at the end in the chat boxes, some links and some articles, things like that, uh, that you all can take. <clears throat> um, but we can also, I can also advertise opportunities to our students. <clears throat> we have an online job board, but I also try to send targeted emails to specific student groups and to specific faculty members so that um, I know that students are seeing these, these opportunities. Um, I, again, execute the internship program, so I'm with the student, faculty, and supervisor the entire, through the entire internship experience. Um, and I'm kind of the advocate for all three parties, I'm the middle person for everybody. Um, so if anyone has questions or concerns, I'm the, that point person and I can help facilitate conversations or answer questions, send information out, whatever is needed. And then also at the end of an internship, I really um, focus on evaluation. Um, so students and supervisors complete two evaluations through the internship experience. Um, the faculty member completes an evaluation at the end of the internship experience. And all of those help us here at the college or helps me figure out um, ways to improve the internship experience for all parties. Um, and I encourage supervisors to um, talk to students about the evaluations that you all would complete, because um, it's important to sit down if you have concerns to share that with the student and help them learn, because most of the time they have no idea. It's a complete new learning experience for them. Uh, so sometimes those conversations are really important for them to um, grow and develop as a professional. So here are some ways that you all can get involved in campus. Uh, it's a little strange right now because of COVID, uh, campus is closed to visitors. Um, so we can't have any in-person events where we have outside guests involved. Uh, but we do, my colleague and I started a podcast. 
um, where we interview alumni and uh, industry partners, employers, to uh, learn more about the career path. For our alumni, we really focus on that career path and like why they chose the major that they did, how did, were they involved on campus, et cetera. But for the industry partners, um, I really focus on, or we focus the questions on, yes, we wanna learn about your specific career path because you are an individual and we wanna learn from you. Uh, but it's also kind of, we treat it kind of as an extended recruiting message for our student listeners. Um, so we ask a lot of questions about like, what's your work environment like? What's your mission? What kind of um, skills do you look for in new hires? Those kinds of questions. Um, so again, it's basically like this hour long recruiting message that you can share with students. Those podcasts are released um, once a month through the school year. And they are recorded, thankfully. <laughs> we have quite a few um, mistakes happening. So we have a student assistant who um, is familiar with all that stuff. So he edits and adds intro music and all kinds of stuff. Um, so that's one way to get involved. Uh, we also have mock, we do mock interviews and resume reviews, cover letter reviews, things like that for our students. Uh, and so if you're interested in um, being one of those reviewers or an interviewer for students, let us know. You can let me know and I can um, share that with our career counselor. We are keeping a list of um, industry partners who want to participate. So when she is um, overloaded with requests, then she'll go down that uh, list of kind of guest reviewers and contact you all to say, hey, we've got this resume that needs reviewed. Do um, you wanna do it? Uh, we also have uh, more traditionally, we can do a virtual informational session where if you wanna talk about specifically your organization or if you wanna talk about like a broad topic that your organization deals with or maybe feel passionate about, uh, we can set up a time to do a virtual informational session which will just be like this, where we're just on Zoom, we'll record the session so we can provide it to our students um, who then can access it anytime. And then finally, we have classroom sessions. So this is one where we're trying to uh, encourage faculty to participate more in this opportunity. Um, if you're interested in uh, again, kind of talk similar to the informational session, but if you're interested in talking about like a general topic, um, let's say you are in the banking industry and you want to um, talk to the finance, one of the finance classes about a particular, you know, theory in banking or something like that, we can connect you with the faculty that teach those courses to see if you're able to get into the classroom as a guest speaker. Um, it may not happen that current semester, depends on the faculty member, uh, but it could be something that gets added into the class next, you know, the next semester. Um, so that could be a, a immediate gratification situation, or it could be one where it's like, yeah, we want you to be here. We're going to have to wait till fall semester or something like that. But that is still an option if you want to um, get involved on campus and get in front of our students. So I wanted to share with the group just a few uh, places that our students have interned the last couple of years here in Fulton. Um, you can see it's a wide variety of businesses. Um, we don't have one specific type of student looking for an internship, as in like one particular major. Um, we do have a lot of business majors in internships, but they're interested in a wide variety of um, topics. But we have uh, psychology majors, science majors, um, political science majors, sports management majors, all kinds looking for these opportunities here locally. Uh, and this is something I think was important to share. Um, so these are some data um, all of this information is from our actual program review survey from the last, this last academic year. So um, 
obviously most of our students who complete internships are upperclassmen. I think that's pretty standard across the board. They're the ones that are, are more um, competent in what field they're wanting to go in. Um, over a little over half are done through the school year, which means they're looking locally, ideally in Fulton. Um, a little over half receive academic credit. Um, again, it's not required for students to, to receive credit for an internship, except um, for two majors and a couple of the minors. Outside of that, most of our students are completing it um, for other reasons. Uh, and that leads me into the top three. <laughs> so the top three reasons internships last academic year completed an internship were these three things. And college credit is on there because again, over half actually receive credit but most of them don't need it. It's not required. Um, so, but the number one reason, and this was the front runner um, looking at the numbers was skills enhancement. They really are looking just for that professional development. They wanna learn how to function in a work environment. Um, phones is an issue. I think if you've had interns before or college students in your office before, you may have noticed that. Um, they're really attached to phones. Um, so when you're thinking about internships or if you have interns in your office, um, I would take into account, they're really looking for someone to show them, how do I function as a professional adult? <laughs> what does that mean? Do I need to be 15 minutes early for my shift? Is it okay if I'm, you know, 15 minutes late for my shift? Like, they want to learn all of those intricacies um, in that day-to-day -day work life because most of them don't know. They're not familiar or they don't have that work experience under their belt. So I've been talking a lot, 40 minutes. I went a little over my practice time. It's okay. Um, I want to, so this is my contact information here. The link is to our external site. So if you look around, on that site, you won't see a whole lot of information geared towards students. Uh, we have an internal website as well where we have an abundance of information <laughs> that we share with them. Um, but for recruiters, or for, for you all, if you're interested in internships, um, this website has some information um, that, you can, that you can use in, in your planning. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing if everyone's okay with that. Um, so I can put some things in the chat box. And so we can all see each other. Okay. And while she's doing that, does anybody have any questions? Um, feel free to unmute yourself if you just want to. Definitely. Talk. I did have a quick question. Um, for the, I know you said it's 35 hours for one credit with the students probably living in Fulton, I would assume. Is travel time included in that? You know, um, no one's asked me that before. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a big thing for me. We get paid to travel, so I'm like, it's in my head. <laughs> I would, I mean, I would, typically I would say no. Because okay. it would be work, like hands-on, what are they doing? But okay. if you're treating them like an employee, let's say you're decide to pay them and you're paying them, I mean, they're in your system like an employee. If employees get paid for travel time, I mean, you could have them, you could tell them, okay, this, when you start traveling to the office, um, that's your, the start of your work time. Okay. Awesome. So I think it really will depend. Um, they keep track of their time um, and they have to submit it. If they are receiving credit, they have to submit that time to their faculty member. Okay. Um, it's part of their, should be part of how they're being graded. I say should, because I don't have control over faculty. <laughs> you're like, hopefully. They do their own thing. Um, but yeah, if, if you're paying them particularly, then you would be treating them as an employee anyway. So I would okay. just stick with your employee um, rules. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Um, one of the things I'm going to put in the chat box is um, the there's oh my gosh the fair standards labor act i forgot to mention it 
Um, they have a fact sheet specific, specifically about internship programs and what it means to be paid or unpaid. And um, it might, if you're really thinking about that, it might be helpful to look at that. Um, any other questions? Um, I actually have one. How many of you all have had an intern or, or consistent interns already? Oh, Cindy, I didn't even see you pop up there. I'm glad you made it. I'm with Central Missouri Foster Care and Adoption Association, by the way. Oh, oh, okay. It. Yes, we've got a call set up. I don't even remember when, Taylor. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, Jennifer, I know, was planning on doing this, but her and her husband are, are closing on a house this morning. So, yeah. yeah, she asked me to take some notes. So, I'm putting a bunch of stuff here in the chat box. So, please forgive me. Yeah, I've done a few over the years um, with you guys and with the University of Missouri in, in several different capacities. I've done a couple of marketing, a couple of restaurant for MU. You know, I think interns are a great thing. I, and I've, I've had interns myself um, in a different couple different areas that I've worked in. And I mean, you can, I'm going to be frank here, you can get duds. <laughs> You can, and you can get some amazing yeah, that's, ones. It, that's that's where it's you struggle with. Okay, how can I get? How can I still have value out of this experience when this person is not what I expected? Um, and then you can get great ones who are totally awesome and rock at everything they do. Um, it's kind of a I don't know. It's, you don't really know until the student gets in there. Um, again, kind of like a, just a typical new hire where you interview them, but you're not really sure um, how they're really going to be. So the documents, I put some links in there. Um, really, they're about a couple about micro internships. If you're if you've not heard of them before, there's some articles kind of describing them. Um, Parker Dewey is a um, website that advertises micro internships to students and it's a free service. And if you're interested in advertising micro internships, employers can use that site too to advertise opportunities. Um, and then there's an article about job shadowing. Because again, I think that's a outlier where not, not everyone really considers that as an educational experience, but it really is for the student. Uh, and then the documents, there's a number of them. I kind of went all across the board. So there's, if you're, if you have internship opportunities that you would like to share with our students, there is a, a form that you can fill out or you can just send me an email with information. Um, I put in some, a sample orientation checklist. So again, if you're brand new to it, or maybe you don't have a, a training process for interns, this checklist, it's very simple, kind of helps you figure out, okay, this is, these are all the things I need to do. I need to show them, hey, here are the light switches. <laughs> Here's the bathroom. You can go anytime, you don't have to ask. Um, those kinds of things or here's your workstation, or here's the person you can go to for questions, that kind of thing. Um, the starting an internship program, PDF, that's one, I did not write that, that one. It's a booklet. Uh, so if you're interested in really creating a formal internship program within your organization, uh, that booklet is really helpful. It kind of takes you step by step. Okay, have you thought about this? These are all the elements of a great internship program. Um, I should, I believe it has um, some templates that you can use if you don't have any kind of materials created. Uh, and then the, the first PDF I attached is just best practices for virtual internships. So if, if you're thinking um, virtual might be a, the best option for you or an option for you, um, I just laid out, I think it's like uh, five tips on how to structure an in, a virtual internship or things to think about as you create one. Like I said before, what kind of mentoring um, 
are you going to provide virtually? How are you going to make sure this person is doing what they need to be doing? How do you make sure this person is, is getting the support they need when, you know, college students typically are really nervous about asking questions. <laughs> and if you don't see them in person, you, you won't really know if they're struggling, if they're not saying anything. So how can you kind of overcompensate for the lack of face-to-face -face through a virtual internship? Okay. Any other questions? I think people are taking some notes. I'll give you a couple moments to um, down, I think you can just download them, right? I need. Yeah, and I'm gonna actually, I, I'm putting in my PowerPoint too. So if you sure. uh, download that, you're welcome to. Um, and then you can see all my notes <laughs> to myself to stay on track. And I stayed on track. You did. And we started late, so it wasn't really 40 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, any other questions? Any comments? The big, the big thing I want to say, I'm not even giving you a chance, but um, the big thing I want to say, the main thing is if you have questions, just reach out. I'm happy like Taylor. Um, we have a call set up sometime in the next <laughs> couple weeks to talk more about internships, what it looks like, how it can, what we can do together. Um, so if you're interested in just having a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, I'm totally open to that. We can awesome. do it through email, we can do it through Zoom, in person, I'm open. Um, I'm just here to answer your questions. I wanna make sure you all have what you need and to be thinking about, hey, I can have interns do these things that I haven't been able to do in forever. Um, and then I just want to help our students be able to connect specifically to our local organizations. Well, Mandy, thank you so much. We appreciate this. I thank found you. it super beneficial myself. Um, I'm going to go through after this presentation and download these um, documents. So if for some reason you missed one or you need one, I will have those. So just send me an email. Um, and additionally, for those who may be watching the recording. Um, yes. I don't, did you see that Mandy? They said, I did. okay, good. Um, I be here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for those of you who may be watching the recording, if you need those documents, uh, just send me an email. Um, I'm sure all of you have my email. You get spammed by me, but marketing at callawaychamber.net and I'll send those over to you. Um, thank you all for popping on. Mandy, thank you so much for giving us this presentation. Thank we you. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for all the information. Thank you. Thanks, have a good Mandy. day, you guys. You, you too. too. See you later. Bye Friday, but it'll be, it'll, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> um, I'm going to stop the recording. Oh, thank you.